floating around on the internet is a, is a claim that at some point in your past, you, know, you signed a petition calling for Columbia to divest in all things Israel. And a lot of information surrounding that or misinformation surrounding that. And I want to give you an opportunity to sort of let us know exactly what happened there, what your role was, and what your sort of philosophy is about sort of divestment type efforts insofar as the Middle East or any other place in the world is right. concerned. Well, when that um, particular petition was being circulated, I was chair of the Department of Anthropology, and in fact, at some point, saw my name on a list and asked it to be removed. The truth is, I do not support uh, divestment as a strategy for the university. I don't support divestment uh, with respect to Israel. At the same time, many of my colleagues felt very strongly about this, and many of them signed a petition, and it circulated widely at the time, uh, which was 2002. And there were, after that, all sorts of other controversies that developed about the climate for Jewish students on Columbia's campus, about the nature of instruction in the Department of Middle East Studies, and indeed about the general uh, atmosphere at Columbia more generally, uh, in which it seemed very difficult for some students to find safe spaces in which to talk about Israel where they didn't feel that the basic uh, 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 context uh, in which they found themselves wasn't uh, hugely, not just anti-Israel, but by implication, anti-Jewish, anti-Semitic. The first thing that we needed to do, of course, was to ensure that no one was made personally uncomfortable on the basis of their religion, as I said, their ethnicity, their identity. We, in fact, and it was my responsibility as the Executive Vice President for the Arts and Sciences, convened an unprecedented faculty committee to look into some of the allegations that had been made. We took advice from Floyd Abrams, the great First Amendment lawyer, and we asked uh, a professor in uh, Columbia, Ira Katznelson, to chair a committee. And we made public the report that they uh, came up with after their uh, inquiry. We'd never done this before, but we did it this time. And we did it uh, despite the concerns on the part of many faculty that this might, in fact, have a chilling effect on uh, public discourse uh, in the university from different perspectives because we felt that we needed to make very clear that we were committed to a classroom environment in which students felt that they could think anything they wanted to think about political issues that might come up uh, in their instruction. At the same time, you know, you can imagine the kinds of passions that uh, were unfurled around these issues more generally. And all kinds of allegations were made. In my case, I'm afraid some of these allegations are not true, and some of them uh, are ones that I find uh, deeply troubling uh, to me personally, but uh, I was not a supporter of the divestment uh, petition. And I have even come out more strongly against any of the kinds of proposals for boycotts uh, against universities. This speaks, too, to not just the importance of the relationships uh, that we've had at Columbia with Israel as a place, but also with Israel as a place where there are universities with whom we have very active exchanges. And I think over the last few years, as we've had more exchanges and more open discussions, many of the constituents on campus, in fact, have found Columbia to be a less potentially threatening place, and indeed a place that has been deeply supportive uh, to all communities. You know, one of the things that has been so rewarding about my time at Columbia has been to be part of an institution that was more open and welcoming to Jewish stu students than was the case for other Ivy League institutions mm -hmm. during many years in the 20th century. And most recently, w through our deep commitment to access and diversity, we now have more students of color than any other institution in the Ivy League, and we have more underrepresented minorities. Now, what this means, of course, is that we have students from all kinds of backgrounds for whom we have to be deeply concerned about their experience mm -hmm. on campus. We've had students who have been concerned, for example, about the fact that as Muslims, they haven't had open access to prayer rooms for the kind of uh, uh, regular daily prayer that is part of their religious observance. And we've had other issues uh, as well for, for other students, and we've been always vigilant to uh, ensure that the climate for all students, especially for students for whom coming to college as, uh, as they do now, uh, often the first member of their family to come to college, means coming to a fairly strange and uh, certainly culturally unfamiliar environment. 
So the question of respect that you asked me about before is a question that has to run deep uh, in terms of our relationships with students from all backgrounds. And we have to be attentive also to the larger context within which the kinds of things that students experience sometimes get magnified on a college campus where there are pressures, obviously, on some communities more than on others and some groups more than others. So we've worked very hard to be as open as we could possibly be and as responsive as we could be to the kinds of concerns that we, that we hear. And of course, we do hear them on a regular basis. So before we move on, I want to drag you back to the divestment issue, if you will. There are also reports that at one time your wife signed a petition, a divestment petition, calling on Columbia to divest in all things Israel. Do you think that's an appropriate issue? Is that something that people should be concerned about, what your wife may or may not have done in the past? Well, first of all, let me say that my wife is a ferociously independent person. She has many views, some of which I share and some of which I don't. We have a long history of being able to talk about things and have different perspectives and uh, even different views. That being said, she did, back in 2002, sign one of the divestment petitions that was circulating around Columbia before she had either thought very much about the issue or, for that matter, really had any sense at all of what putting her signature to that document might mean. And she has subsequently thought a great deal about this issue, and she has regretted signing this. She has changed her position completely on issues of divestment. And indeed, I think she feels that uh, it was an unfortunate uh, and ill-thought uh, moment uh, in her own uh, life and uh, participation in things at Columbia. That being said, I need to emphasize again. Uh, she has her views. Uh, they are not germane to the kinds of things that I believe uh, that are part of being the next chancellor of the University of California at Berkeley. And I hope that she'll be given the independence and the respect uh, necessary for her to have her role on the faculty as a member of the community uh, and indeed as my partner as I move to Berkeley.